Hello, my name is George W. Jones, Director of Fine Arts for the Garland Independent School District. And welcome to another edition of Spotlight on the Arts. On May 21st, 2014, the UIL one-act play state competition was held at the Bass Concert Hall on the campus of the University of Texas at Austin. We are so proud that the UIL one-act play from Lakeview Centennial High School advanced through five levels of competition to appear at this state competition in Austin. It's the first time in the history of the school that a one-act play has advanced to this level. We're so proud of the students and their directors. We recently had an opportunity to visit with the students who are members of the cast and crew as well as the directors of this outstanding play. They shared their thoughts about this once in a lifetime experience that they had. In addition to that, you begin for a real treat in that the staff of GRS TV shot the entire production and you'll have a chance to see it. I hope that you'll enjoy this segment featuring the production, The Storm in the Barn. About this time last year, Mr. Doyle came in to me with this um, magazine that we get um, with our uh, Educational Theater Association membership called Dramatics. And in it was this play called The Storm in the Barn, and he was really intrigued by the cover of it with this little boy looking into a barn. And I just thought it was a cool lighting, uh, a lighting effect. And so I said, hey, I gotta show my, my lighting kid this, you know, he'll really appreciate it. So I, I kept on, I held on to the magazine and then as he came in, I kind of looked at the magazine to see what it was from and they had the entire script in that edition of the magazine. And after reading it, I said, this is a great Rhonda Reed type show. He came in, he goes, this is a Rhonda Reed play, you need to read it. And he said, I really think it'd be great for our children's show next year. So I, I sat down and I finally read it. And when he came back in, I had this look on my face and he goes, uh-oh. <laughs> and I said, um, yeah, we're going to do this play, but not for children's show. We're doing it for UIL. Once upon a time, the rain hid its essence in a small traveling bag and walked among men. And the rain became a king. Um, one Act Play is unique um, to Texas, though other states do have One Act Play competitions. Um, one Act Play in Texas uh, is the largest contest of its kind. Um, you have a play that has to be under 40 minutes long. So there are a total of five competitions. Uh, first we start off with zone, and then once we advance from there we go to district, and then from district we advance to area, and then there's two advance from area to region, and then two from region to uh, state. Yeah, um, that was probably the biggest challenge. I mean, we auditioned for the show in December, and then we started rehearsing it the very end of uh, January, 1st of February. And our first contest was in March, and our last one was end of May. Uh, what was special about this show, instead of just constantly running it for that solid three months, things were changing with each level of competition. So that was what kept the show fresh. The challenge was keeping them focused because they had grades and you know, other, you know, freedom or jobs or, you know, those kind of things that they had to tackle. And it was just a matter of not trying to find a balance between not over rehearsing, but keeping them fresh, keeping them interested. We did a lot of different unique things like actually going and rehearse inside a barn and took them on different things in order to try to reward them. We've all given so much of our life to this show and all the time that we have to, for ourselves, to each other because we want to work well with each other but it's so worth it because being here with th these people it's been like the best experience ever. There are times that we all get stressed and then we just have to forgive like I have to ask for forgiveness from them a lot of times just like they have to forgive you know, ask for forgiveness from me sometimes because in a family, you're gonna have ups and downs and fights and all that kind of stuff. I think the obstacle was each other, like the cast and pretty much the directors that we sometimes come in, like run into a little trouble, but then 
At the end of the day, it was like, we're all a company, we're all a family. We gotta, we're trying to put this show to the best, be the best, and that's all that matters. As a family, brothers and sisters, we fight, we argue, we bicker, but I think at the end of the day, um, we all love each other a lot, and we all had a common goal, and that was to go as far as we possibly could and to get as many people to see the show as possible. And so whenever something came up, we would just have to be reminded by each other or by our directors that we're doing what we love and we're surrounded by people that we love and I think that's what got us through it. Theater is a family, it's a community. Without all of the parts working, then I don't think we would have had a successful run this year. Yeah, I love the you. entire world. Like You've been my best friend. You're too weird. You're so shady. No, no. I love you. You're shady. From day one, sitting around a table, it was me and Rhonda and a bunch of uh, maybe three or four of the production kids and the students. And we just sat around the table and we talked about all the different options that we had. We talked about um, the director's vision for it and how we wanted to make that come to life. And not surprisingly, the kids' input was invaluable. I mean, they had a lot of really, really good ideas. Um, a lot of them we didn't use, you know, I mean, because you you end up only using one idea <laughs> by the time it's all said and done. The really unique thing about Miss Reed and Mr. Doyle is that they bounce ideas off of each other really well and they're a really good team. They ask us for our opinions and our ideas, whether they use them or not, <laughs> and we're all, we're all really a family in that way. Uh, one thing I really appreciated was the amount of uh, patience there was throughout the entire process. Uh, there was a lot of elements that took a very, very long time for us to be able to do well and, and just their patience with that and also their passion knowing that our directors love the show just as much as we did, if not more, really helped uh, us try to get out of our, our comfort zone and do things that really set us apart from other shows throughout the entire process. What I like about Reed and Doyle is that they're very, very dedicated to this troupe and they were very, very dedicated to this show, which is good because mm -hmm. sometimes we all get stressed out and yeah, <laughs> so it's it's good that we we had their push and their drive and their passion, as Edwin said. But the main thing is, you know, too, is just um, is picking what was the most important thing at that moment. What had to be handled right then, right away, and who did I need to call? Who did I need to get this paid for and this bus ordered and um, who needed? Uh, <laughs> who was failing a class and we needed to make sure that they were staying eligible. I mean, that was a big stress is with them being out so much, you know, there were so many teachers on campus that, you know, put in some extra hours with those students to help them make up work. And then our seniors were a huge part of it. They, if it wasn't for our seniors and some of them stepping up and really helping us, then I don't think Doyle and I would have managed. I think the, the kind of show that we had this year is different than we had in years past. There was a really stronger sense of ensemble in this play than there has been in UIL plays that we've done in the past. Um, typically we have a, a few leads and then we have a, 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 you know, a, a group of secondary characters and then we have maybe a few chorus members or ensemble uh, characters. The way that the ensemble members didn't really feel like they were just small roles. They felt like they really played a part, um, whether it was holding an instrument or um, operating a puppet or you know whatever their job was they had they had responsibilities from the beginning of the show to the end so I think that sense of um, belonging and, and kind of necessity of every single person in the company helped to that group dynamic um, at the beginning of the show I only knew how to play two instruments the piano and the ukulele and for the show since neither of those could really be used in our show or brought on stage I um, learned how to play the banjo in two of our songs when I first read the script, I saw that there was live music and I was really excited about it. But then we kind of brushed it off. I was like, am I going to play the guitar? Is there going to be music? And they were like, uh, we'll think about it. And it kind of turned into this little song that we did for the first few. And then Doyle did his magic and he, he kind of took what we had musically and um, kind of arranged these songs that came from the actual show. And um, it was just great. Every, every song had its kind of story. You know, the first song was kind of despair and, and, you know, depression, and then this, the last song is hope, you know, and uh, it was it was really important to our show, and it, I'm glad it turned out the way it did. One of the coolest parts for me was watching everyone who knew about music collaborate and change the songs up and fix them and make them work, and 
I really, I really think that's what really pushed us over the edge and made us above the competition at the actual competitions because we had such unique and awesome music. When I read it, when I originally read it, one, I could visualize it, um, and two, it, um, it really spoke to me very differently from like Mr. Doyle and each of the kids when they read it. Um, it spoke to them in different ways. And the audiences, I think, because it, you know, it's a story set in the Dust Bowl in 1937, but it's a story that any of us can identify with because it's us wanting to make our parents proud. Um, how do we fit in our community? How do we fit in our society? And I think for high school kids in particular, that's every day for them, trying to figure out where they fit and wanting someone to love them and be proud of them. And so I really think um, that's one of the reasons and it's just a show that everybody of any age can enjoy it. Not just a little kid going to see a children's show because it's more than that. Um, we've all had parents and you know, and that relationship between Jack and his dad is just, I think, one that's really unique. Uh, my character's name was Jack, and it was, uh, he was an 11-year-old boy, and uh, basically the whole time he's just trying to prove himself to his family, uh, the town, and ultimately his dad. That's the main goal. Uh, to get into character, it was pretty easy, but one of the most difficult parts was to try and make sure I wasn't acting too much like a child because although he was a child, he was still pretty smart and he knew about things or he at least wanted to know about things. And then ultimately, ultimately by the end, he ends up growing up, so. Once upon a time, the world was turned into dust. Once upon a time, the world was turned into dust. Once upon a time, the earth grew hard and would grow no food, and families would gather all they had and flee the land in search of life. Because once upon a time, 
the rain refused to fall. Once upon a time, the rain refused to serve, and the rain became power. Once upon a time, the rain hid its essence in a small traveling bag and walked among men. And the rain became a king. But also, once upon that time, there was a boy named Jack. <laughs> hey, Jack Rabbit. <laughs> Looks like Jackrabbit can take a punch. Can he take two? No. <laughs> Just storm! Just storm! <laughs> Jack, are you all right? What are you doing out there? I was in town, but. Why didn't you take? Shelter at the general store! Very interesting. You chose to run into the dust storm. That's not a rational decision. I was running away from the dust, not into it. Sometimes we think things. Maybe you even hear voices in our heads that seem to make sense. Isn't that right, Jack? I don't follow you, sir. Abe, will you take off that well, mask? I tried to wait it out oh, in the Tom. Talbot's barn, but it was locked. The Talbot's left town last night, Jack. California. But I... next time, take shelter. Next time, think. We don't want to lose you like Dorothy. We're Dor not losing Dorothy. We're not losing anyone. Your daughter's condition, Mrs. Clark, which... Uh, by the way, this is interesting. Our colleagues at the Red Cross headquarters in Wichita are calling it dust pneumonia. But... Well, I'm afraid it hasn't improved. Uh, Jack, see to your sisters. You best keep an eye on your boy there, Tom. I've begun to notice a new condition out here. All this dust seems to get to people on a whole different level. I'm thinking of calling it dust dementia. <laughs> Did you really outrun the storm? You must be the fastest kid in town. I wouldn't say that. I mean, now that I am stuck in bed, that is. If Ma and Pa would let me out of here, I could still outrun you something awful. Well, not anymore. I'm getting bigger. Does Ma still have that mirror? Because you might want to take a look at yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jack. <coughs> measure myself against the fence posts out the roadside, and it only comes up to here now. Maybe they're sinking. <laughs> they're not sinking. <coughs> 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 Curtis. 
Is the Tablet Farm really haunted? It's not haunted, it's just empty. Not even the grasshoppers will live there. Well, I'm just saying the hoppers... Don't! Don't you call their name! Well, Uncle Carl said... Do you want to call them back? No. Then hush. It's the rabbits you gotta worry about now. That's what Ernie says. Once the grasshoppers went back in the ground, the rabbits Mm. dug back up. Uh And now they're finishing off anything that's left. Stop it. Talk about good things. Tell me about something good that happened in town, Jack. Uh, well... So, how's the other Dorothy? Well, I expect she's going to get back to Oz, but she's in another scrape this time. (coughs) 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 At the time, the wind began to blow. A ship was sailing far out upon the waters, and the waves were getting bigger and bigger. And it tossed the ship around so roughly that the sailormen had to hold fast to the ropes and the railings to keep themselves from being pitched headlong into the sea. Oh, and the clouds were so thick in the sky that it made the day dark as night, which added to the terrors of the storm. Shut me out, Tom. If we're gonna get through this, it's gotta be together. We promised, didn't we? Look at me, Tom. I seen how you tried. I seen you out there before the sun come up, cracking the hard earth open with nothing but lantern light to see. You think I don't see your fingers scraped raw from trying to get seed, any seed, just to take hold. It's too big for us, any of us. We're getting swallowed and no one's even noticing. Buried in dust. My roots are in this ground as deep as yours. I watered it with my tears and blood as much as anyone. This is home, Tom, but It's I... cursed. No rain, no crops. The animals die and their bellies full of dust. It's not your fault. There is only so much I can do alone. Jack is no help. I still have to fix the truck before we can... Last thing we want to do Break down on the road in the middle of a storm. That's what got the Jones boys. They never had a chance. Tom. I'll get us ready as soon as I can. I'll get Dorothy out of here. And we'll just... We'll... I got what I need. Well, can I help no, you? No, Jack, you can't. Well, can I go to town? Look, to just... I need to do this, Jack. Why don't you go find your baby sister? Keep an eye on her.
Jack? What's the wrong? Hi, Ernie. Just thought I'd stop by. You look a little spooked. Well, I was on my way here, and I saw snakes. Oh, dead snakes, nailed to the fence post. Oh, don't pay it no mind. It's just some superstitious mumbo jumbo. Well, what's it for? Some fellas think a dead snake will bring the rain. More likely to bring a stink. <laughs> when people can't do anything, they do crazy things. The whole town's going crazy. <laughs> well, looky here. <laughs> I feel scrawny just wearing it. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I said, get. See you outside, pal. <laughs> Jack. Jack! Hey, Jack! Did I ever tell you that story about that extraordinary boy? His name was Jack, by the by. <laughs> How he killed the king of the West Winds. The other day. It was a good story. Oh. Uh. Then, how about Jack and the king of blizzards? Uh-huh. Ooh. Uh. Then, how about that time old Jack whipped up the two-headed king of the Northwest Winds? <gasps> Well, <laughs> old Jack wasn't too big, but he was the strongest boy in the whole county, maybe even the whole country. Oh. And one day, for one reason or another, he was stuck up a tree. See? <laughs> now normally, Jack could just hop down out of that tree as easy as nothing, but this day, for reasons I can't exactly recollect. But he was being chased by a giant. Oh, I thought you said he had two heads. Uh, he did. Two heads. <laughs> a two-headed giant. So Jack cleverly outwitted the giant by squeezing milk from an ordinary stone. Milk from a stone? Uh, well, yeah. It was a trick of some sort, something about Jack having some milk hidden in his pocket or something. And he faked the whole thing with the... the... <laughs> Anywho. <laughs> Eventually, Jack had to climb down the tree to face the giant. And the giant had an axe! Oh. Oh. Um. Uh. A big axe! Whoa! And they commenced to fight him. And next thing you know, old Jack's got the giant's own axe away from him. And with all his strength, old Jack lifted up that mighty axe and cut off both the giant's heads in one swing, one clean swipe. Gosh! <laughs> Dorothy is about to be set upon by 
five-wheelers. Men with four wheels instead of hands. What's wrong? Did you see any wheelers outside? Well, I was in the Talbot's farm. Well, I didn't break anything, I promise. It's just, well, the door was stuck and, and it smelled funny. Barns generally do. Not like that. Not like animals. It smelled like, like, I don't know, a funny smell. So, what's Dorothy up to? She, she was going to visit her uncle, and her ship was caught in a storm. She fell overboard with this chicken, but they both washed up in Oz. She's in the deadly desert now. Ooh, is that wizard in this one? No. Well, I understand that Dorothy was taken out of Kansas by a twister, but I never understood why that wizard was there. <gasps> was he hiding out like a gangster like Al Capone? The wizard's not like Al Capone. But was he hiding out in Oz? No. I suppose in Oz he was a big wizard, more than just a fellow. He wanted to be special, to be powerful. I guess he wasn't much use at home in Kansas. Dorothy, dear, you shouldn't be trying to talk so much. It's okay. Talking to Jack helps. <laughs> Deadly desert? Don't you get enough of that round here? Mom, tell us about before when you were a girl. This land was a paradise for my folks. It was beautiful. It was green. An ocean of grass. The Indians had it first. Acres of pasture lands. Then the white folks moved them out and started ranching, but it was good land. It promised crops. Folks came from all over to farm it. My family came early. We lived in a dugout at first, rat in the ground, dirt walls, lots of bugs, <laughs> big bugs. It wasn't perfect, but it gave us shelter. My daddy and my brothers worked harder than anyone. They planted wheat, and the wheat came up. Same story pretty much for you. For your Paul's family, too. <laughs> we met and married. And we built this house. Made it a home. And it was everything I ever dreamed of. Especially after little ones were born. <laughs> Jack, I wouldn't be too hard on Mabel. Yes, ma'am. I loved the planting season. When the rain came, when you'd hear the thunder, where when there is thunder, thunder the, the rain, rain must, must surely follow. <laughs> my Paul always used to say that. But my very favorite part about the rain is right before it comes. There's a certain smell in the air.
what I hear in the middle of the night. A bag, a flash of light. Jack. In the Talbot's barn, I saw a man. His face, his face was made of red. Jack! Jack! Come on now, get inside. Just dementia? seen a ghost or something. Ernie, was there ever any gangsters in town? <laughs> gangsters? What would they steal? Well, maybe they'd be on the lamp, hiding out in a barn or something. I think this is too good a hideout, Jack. I don't think any big shot self-respecting city criminal will be caught dead or alive in a place like this. Ernie, was there ever a king of storms? Uh, what? In the stories, was there... Is there a king of lightning and Ooh. thunder and Ooh. rain? Ah, king of storms? Uh, nope. But there's the king of Merrick, though. Now, that was the king. It seems he had a daughter. And one day, oh, sure Jack. About the king of storms. So sure, I'm sure. But King Merrick, though. Now, the thing about Jack was he wasn't the biggest, but he was clever. Real clever. And he was just about the bravest boy that you had. Oh.
Well, where are you going, Pa? There's a rabbit drive today. Caught a bunch of rabbits in Johnson's pen. To eat? No. Well, can I no. see? No! You stay here. You can't handle this. How many reckon they round up? Thousands, maybe. Never seen so many jackrabbits in one pan. Bad enough to cross one, bro. The grasshoppers were one thing. But these jackrabbits, swimming all over our land. Ain't anything green. Can't do anything that might want to cross. All right, man. Let's get to work. This has to end. Westward, the fertile land of Ev suddenly ended a little way from the palace. And the girl could see miles and miles of sandy desert that stretched farther than her eyes could reach. It was the desert, she thought, with much interest that alone separated her from the wonderful land of Oz. And she remembered sorrowfully that she had been told no one had ever been able to cross this dangerous waste but herself. Once a cyclone had carried her across it and a magical pair of silver shoes had carried her back again. But now, she had neither cyclone nor silver shoes to assist her, and, and her condition was sad indeed. <laughs> <coughs> this has to end now! <laughs> Do you even? 
Jack, we're gonna bring the cross back. And Jack, I could sure use your help. Like when I look back on this in 20 years or whenever, well, I'll, I'll, I'll think of all the times before the shows where all of our strife or animosity that we've had towards each other just went out, out the window. And um, we came together as a, as a theater family and we stood in a circle and um, we would just sing the last song that we sing in the play. And um, it was just a really good, feeling and that's my favorite memory from Storm in the Barn. My favorite memory was probably that feeling whenever you hear your name called because it is such a cool feeling for, I, I'm assuming for everyone, but it, it really was for me. It, it just, you feel so proud and you feel like all the work you've done didn't go to waste. It was just, it was all worth it. I will say when I went to high school here, um, we had a different theater teacher every year. And, you know, I had one stretch for about a year and a half where I had the most consistency. And um, the classes, I didn't really learn a whole lot. And 
Um, the plays were a mess a lot of the time, and so when I did get the job here 12 years ago, that was my goal, was to come in and give these kids something I never had, which was a really structured theater program where every step of the way they could actually learn something and be meaningful. And you know, this uh, 12 years we've built a program that can stand up to any other program in the district. It's the largest program out of all the high schools. We have the highest enrollment. And um, I do feel, it, feel like we put on professional theater. I know for a fact that um, I learned how to present myself on the stage and present myself in front of people and how to speak with more diction and get what I'm trying to say across to people. And I'm pretty sure that that's going to take me places by itself. And I just wanted to just thank every single person. I think the experience I would take out of this is the amount of hours and each and every day we rehearsed and how hard we try to get our characters down in diction and what Darius was saying. The thing I'll take out of this is, is learning how to, to keep going and to keep pushing forward and striving for, for a common goal because it's really easy to get into a routine and a habit and to, to have this process be tedious, but it definitely taught me that how to keep working with the same people and to keep striving on for, for the better good of a bigger company. This year was just icing on the cake. It, we knew all year long that we had a really great group of kids. These seniors, like I said, are just amazing. They have been, the shows we picked this year were because we knew they could handle it. And then the underclassmen just kept stepping up and doing their part as well. And, and then to have a state run. And, um, you know, on top of that, I'm getting married. And uh, I, you know, joked that of course this year would be the year we would make it to state. Was when I have a lot on my plate, but it's all kind of getting handled and falling into place. And you know, it's a it's a really special way to end my time. Thank you for watching today. This edition of Spotlight on the Arts represents the final episode for the 2013-14 school year. It has been a very successful year in all areas of the fine arts in the Garland School District. We express our appreciation to our superintendent, our board of trustees, all of our administrators, the principals at our campuses, the supportive parents, our amazing staff, and of course the students for making this such an exceptional year in the fine arts. I hope that you'll join us again next September when once again we shine our spotlight on the arts. <laughs>